This is the Quantum Interface Heads-Up Display solution. It requires two pieces of hardware, an eye tracker, in this case it's an iTech eye tracker, but we can use any solution, and it requires a thumb pad or a sensor to sense motion of the thumb or the body or anything else. In this case, this is just a trackpad, so we're using these two items. What our solution does is it allows you to look at the object to identify it, and then a body motion confirms what you're looking at and actually activates it. We have multiple redundancies, and this allows the user to keep their eyes on the road the maximum amount of time. So there's three states of each object. There's a, select, there's a ready state, a selected state, and an active state. The active state is bright green. You'll see this in the upper left corner. That's the odometer that's bright green. The other three are pale green, and that means they're ready to be selected. When I look at them with my eyes, it automatically selects. You can see me selecting objects as I move towards them. And notice I'm not dwelling on them. I'm moving in the direction of them, and that is what activates. That's what actually selects the object. In our solution, you don't have to keep looking at it. You just look at it once and look back at the road, and it remains in that selected state. To make it active, I select it and then I touch the touchpad and it activates it. And you can see now the GPS turned bright green, so it's the active icon, it's the active selection. Now I'm gonna do this again, but this time what I'm gonna do is I looked at it and then I look back at the road. So I'm gonna look at my GPS and look back at the road. It's as fast as I can just look at it and back at the road. I tap it, so I don't have to keep looking at it to activate it. This allows me to look at what I want and immediately go back to the road while the object stays active. In the GPS, I use my thumb pad and I scroll the picture for pan. I look at the plus sign and I tap, I zoom in. I look at the minus sign and I can tap and zoom out. Again, just scrolling randomly through the pad. If I want to select music, I look at the music, I look back at the road. I move up and it actually starts, in this case, as Pandora is what this represents. And you can see that there's a middle column, there's a volume control. So I look at the volume control, I look back at the road, and I can control the volume just by moving up and down. And, this, and then if I look in the middle, I can look back at the road, but I'm still controlling and scrolling through my list of songs. I can look at the controls such as pause, fast forward, and then I could go climate control, I can choose any one of the rest. In this case, if I want to advance to the next song, I can either tap it, I'm going to turn it down, or I can scroll and then just move to the right, and it chooses the next one. So at this point, I can tap the fast forward, Pause, play. Now here, I'm looking back at the road and I'm scrolling through my pause and play. I'm looking at the road and I moved all the way to the left and I can control my volume. I look at my menu again, I look back at the road. I just move to the right and it plays volume again. So this is an example where it, we have multiple redundancies. It can work by looking and selecting Or it can work by just scrolling while you're not looking at it and doing the same motions. So let's say we have the radio on, but I actually want to go to MP3 player. I can move to the left and it would connect to my iPhone. I can move up at a 45 degree angle and can go to my radio functions, move straight up and it goes to Pandora. If I want to adjust the climate control, I have three different ways of doing this. One, you can see that I'm looking and I'm rotating. Here's my volume, here's my temperature, here's my fan speed. As I look at it, it selects it, but it doesn't activate it. 
until I actually do something with my body. In this case, I pick my climate control. I begin to move upwards and I can variably control. I'm moving up and down without lifting my finger. So I can go back on the road and actually scroll through the list. I can also just look at the arrow and tap. Look at the down temperature and tap. I can look at my fan speed and move up or down as I, as I move up. I scroll up and down. I can look at the buttons and tap to do the same thing. I can look at my defrost, vent, floor, combination, back to my speeds. I look at my radio, my volume, and I bring it up and down. Now I can do the same thing with just motion. So if you look at the thumb pad, you'll see that what I do is I move left, there's volume, temperature, fan, temperature, volume. So I can move left or right to scroll through this list. Like here I move left and right to choose temperature and I can immediately move up and down. And you'll see on the screen that as I move up and down, it changes the temperature. I move right, I never lifted my finger and I can scroll through fan speed. I never lift my finger, I scroll all the way to volume and scroll up and down. So at this point, as I learn, I can keep my eyes on the road and have complete control with just motion. The user begins to learn how to use motion and spends less and less time using their eyes to select the controls. If I want to go back to my odometer, I look at my odometer and tap it. This is the quantum interface display and it's based upon eyes and body motions. And it's as quick as you can look. One other point to remember here is that I'm not actually looking at the object, I'm just looking in the direction of the object. So by the time I actually look at the object, it's already been selected. There is no latency and it just seems to know what you want to do. That's our precognition. So let's say that I wanted to do something very quickly. I'm driving, I go, you know what, I'm a little warm. Let's, uh, let's make the temperature go down a little. I go back on the road. I look at my music player. I want to actually choose a different song. I'll fast forward to the next song. Uh, let's raise the volume. I'm still looking at the road. And see where I am on the map. Oh, that's where I am. Back to my radio station. Let's look at the odometer and keep driving. So our solution allows you to very quickly look at an object and look back at the road. The object remains ready and selected, but it's not activated until I actually touch it. Then it becomes active. In our system, it times out after about four or five seconds, and it goes back to the odometer. Thank you for looking at the quantum interface heads-up display.